I have a POE4. My father died of Alzheimer's. I am a low sugar plant-based eater for like 10 years. I have no problems with um, insulin resistance. So when I look at the list of the different types of Alzheimer's, like what, what's the mechanism, what could happen to me if I'm keeping not, you know, if I'm keeping all my numbers favorable? Yeah. So, so your home IR is good, I'm assuming. Uh, and so where do you stand um, with, uh, you know, with your metabolic flexibility? Um, are you getting into ketosis? No, I ha- I tried that and I didn't feel well. So I okay. ended up stopping. Okay. Now, is so that something you- now I don't have any med- um, signs of MCI or even CSI. No. Should I still s- try to do that so I can switch? It's a great point. Well, so, you know, ahead of time, that's great. Uh, and, and what's your current age? If you don't mind my asking. No, 63, 63. Yeah. Perfect. So yeah, you're a youngster. I'm just, I'm just turning 70. So yeah. So, yeah. So you're a youngster. So that's great. And this is perfect. So you are the perfect person here having insulin sensitivity. You've got a single copy of ApoE4, as you know, it's, you know, you have a family history, so you want to keep yourself on the right side. Now, what does that mean? It means making sure that you don't have ongoing inflammation. Do you know your HSCRP? Oh, uh, sorry, no, I just know everything's normal. Yeah, HR, okay. HRCRP? HSCRP. So you want to make sure your high sensitivity C-reactive protein is down substantially. We'd like to see it down below 0.9 or down more like 0.3, 0.4, not mm-hmm. up at 1.1, 1. 1, 1. 1.5. Again, you have to remember you have ApoE4, which is a pro-inflammatory gene. So you're very good at responding to inflammagens and (laughs) responding to pathogens better than many people, but it puts you at the same time at risk for having chronic ongoing inflammation. Do you know the status of your gut? Do you have any leaky gut? No. Okay, that's great. So you wanna, so, so the things that you could give you problems Um, are energetics. You want to make sure that you have appropriate cerebral blood flow. Do you know your nocturnal oximetry? Is it possible that your oxygenation is dropping down at night? I don't know that. Okay. So that's another critical. So the bottom line here is you have to be aware of, and this is where, you know, working with a health coach or working with your physician um, and uh, what part of the country are you in? Are you in Northwest or or are you in South South Florida? South Florida. Florida. Okay, fantastic. So there are all sorts of physicians all over Florida um, that do this protocol. Um, And there are health coaches as well. So you want to work with someone and it sounds like you worked with Dr. Ross in the past. So she would have certainly checked this. Um, Do you have a a recode report? So we actually have a report that goes through all these different things that is generated. And if you have that, it'll show you and I'm happy to go over those as well. It will show you all the different things that are contributing. So in your case, yes, you need to be concerned about anything that's inflammatory. Your oral microbiome, do you have any you know, chronic sinusitis issues? Do you have any tick-borne illness? Florida is a common place for mold exposure. Do you have a high uh, burden of biotoxins? How are your heavy metals? Do you have issues with, uh, you know, with uh, uh, mercury amalgams? That's another a common one. Um, do you have reduction in your estradiol, in your progesterone, pregnenolone, thyroid, things like that? How's your vitamin D status? Uh, and you know, then getting your the energetics. So the big four that I mentioned before: energetics, trophic, making sure that you don't have too much inflammation or too much toxicity. Those are the big four contributors. And clearly you've addressed some of them already. Now you brought up a great point. Do you need to get into ketosis? And this is actually a point of contention. So we're still arguing about this with the various practitioners. If you have symptoms or you're scoring poorly on the testing, cognitive testing, you absolutely want to add ketones to the mix. And you can start out with exogenous ketosis you can do things like, you know, ketone salts, ketone esters, or MCT oil. And again, work of Stephen Kinane, very interesting in this area. That's, this is critical for supporting your brain. However, we recognize at the same time, people who are taking MCT oil can increase their LDL particle number. So if you've got vascular issues, you want to think more in terms of ketone salts or esters, which don't raise your LDL particle number. On the other hand, you pointed out you're just interested in prevention. Now, again, if you develop symptoms, you want to go on reversal. But, but you, you know, this is great because you'll catch it early. 
Prevention only, you don't necessarily need to get into ketosis, but you do want to be insulin sensitive. But if you find, because you, there are changes with people with APOE4, you can get changes even into your 20s in terms of changes in the PET scan. So if you do find there are issues with cognition, please make sure that you add the getting into ketosis so that you can now go back and forth between ketones uh, and, uh, and, uh, you know, and, and, and glucose. And if you've got, uh, do you remember what your HOMA IR was? Uh, actually, we actually we've lost her. Um, oh, okay, so but in any case, that so the idea is yes, there are all these different things that can contribute, and especially for people who are APOE four positive, nobody should get this problem. Be aware of those. Work with a health coach or work with a practitioner, and make sure that you don't slip into cognitive decline. If you begin to have it, don't chalk it up to just natural aging. Get in, get treated, get make sure that you address this as early as possible. Mm-hmm.